For this mid-month wisdom, I would like to thank a mentee of mine, Chris Kelch, during our group mentorship call last week. He brought up a phenomenal question that I realized needed to be a mid-month wisdom. Chris asked, what changes? What changes within you that will fundamentally change your strategy? See, when Ian and I started, I kept a minutes of our first ever meeting back in July of 2015. And I have to say, our strategy definitely has changed and things have changed over the years. And those changes are really important to plan for, even though you have no idea what they're going to be. Look, at the end of the day, we as people, we change. We change in many ways and many predictable and many very much so unpredictable ways. And though you can't actually plan for all the changes you can expect and will hit you just blindside, you can do this. You can build in flexibility and optionality within whatever it is that you're doing. That's the core of this mid-month wisdom. Build your business and your life around flexibility and optionality. I would say that there are three big buckets. You can put all the changes that I've seen in the mobile home park space, again, from a personal standpoint, affect my business and friends of mine's businesses. First and foremost, your wants. That simple. What do you want? Turns out a lot of people make the mistake of trying to get into mobile home parks because they think they want mobile home parks, but the truth is they want something else. In other words, the idea of passive income, lots of wealth, generational wealth, is really nothing more than a Band-Aid, a delusion, a pipe dream, a short-term fix like alcohol or getting addicted to dating or <laughs> drugs or anything. Money is just as addictive, or at least can be, as any of that. And I think people in general look at money like a problem solver. And the truth is, it just isn't. We're going to address that in a little bit, because that's another one of the big things, my big three, if you will. But I have met plenty of people over my, as of this recording, six and a half years in this space, who get into mobile home parks wanting one thing and whether they never wanted mobile home parks to begin with, they just got whatever they needed to get out of it and now have left or whether they just didn't, they plateaued and couldn't get through it and quit or whatever. I have met several people who are, I'm still friends with that are no longer in this space because one day they just woke up and realized mobile home parks was not for them. This is why I am, I don't really look at people as competition because I know if I stick around this space for 30 years and nothing catastrophic happens, I'm going to win just because I'm still here. I had a great conversation a couple of years ago with a gentleman at MHI in New Orleans. And you know what he told me? I've been around this space for 15 years. I come to these conferences every year. And every year, 20% of the people turn over. As in 20% are gone, 20% new take their place. And he said in 15 years, over well, comfortably over 80% of the people who are at the conferences 15 years ago to now are long gone. It happens over and over and over again. It is the shiny object theory. Until you know who you truly are and what you truly want out of life, you're going to continue to jump from lily pad to lily pad, as my friend Ryan Smith said so eloquently when I interviewed him. You're going to be looking from one thing to the next until you find whatever it is that you're meant to be when you grow up. Or you never find it because you're never really looking because you're looking for all the wrong things. You can say the same thing about dating. A lot of people look for a lot of qualities that don't really make any sense. 
Anyways, <laughs> number one, the way you will change is you will either discover that you didn't want something or want something else. And that will change how you buy mobile home parks and possibly how you operate them. Number two is capabilities. When I look at the notes from the minutes from our first meeting, boy, was I wrong. I made a big LinkedIn post about it too, a year or two or three ago, about how we absolutely smashed our expectations. I thought I was going to have 500 lots by the year 2020, starting in 2015. I had 500 lots within two years. I mean, we're not even close. Now, I also thought I was going to have a mobile home park within 12 months. I did not. So I can't remember who says this, but it's a great quote. I think it was Bill Gates, that you will overestimate what you can do in a year and you will underestimate what you can do in 10. Boy, is that true. Now, every year that I'm in this business, I realize there are more things I can do, bigger, better, cooler, more impactful things that I can do that I had no idea I could do. My mentorship program is a constant reminder to me that there are a lot of people I can help out there. When I go and meet with my residents, there are a lot of people I can help and I can make a, a positive impact, not just at my communities, not just with my mentees, but also with you listening in if you're not one of my mentees. If I can help inspire you to go out and do good things, that is my mission in life, which will then bring us on to number three. Number three is having lots of money. And lots of money isn't, it's a very subjective metric because lots of money to me is different than lots of money to you, is different than lots of money to someone else. Having lots of money means to me, not a dollar figure, but rather an amount of cash, if you will, where you just go, boy, that's more than I need. That could be $10, that could be $10 million, that could be $100 million. It's different for everybody, but I have been a very cheap person for the majority of my life, in my personal life, not as a business owner, but in my personal life, I am very quick to not spend money. My business, I'm very quick to spend money because I like when things work and I don't like waiting for something to get fixed. I move quick, I pay quick, I invest in my properties. In my personal life, I'm kind of the opposite. I like to wear clothes that are 10 years old. I like to drive cars that are 10 years old. I don't upgrade things very frequently. I'm generally speaking a cheap person in my personal life. Well, when you have air quotes enough money or enough money to you, what I've realized is that at a certain point in time, it's okay to go and buy new clothes. At a certain point in time, if you have kids and you have a little Honda Fit, nothing wrong with my Honda Fit, I loved it. Kept it for 11 years and well over 100,000 miles and I even gave it to my brother. So it's still in the nearest family. But what I realized is, boy, I really don't need this with kids because it's just too small for what I need. And so we ended up buying a car, which is something I also thought I would never do. And what it taught me was that at a certain point in time, if you're cheap in your personal life, you will have enough money where you don't need to be cheap. I was cheap out of necessity. And you reach a certain point where you don't need to be cheap unless it makes you happy to be cheap, which I know plenty of people who are happy being cheap, whether they have tons of money or have no money. What I realized about myself, speaking of your wants and changes, flipping around over the years, is that I didn't actually want to be cheap in my personal life. I just got so used to scrapping pennies together that it created a mindset in me that I could not spend money unless I absolutely had to. And now that I don't have to be a penny pincher anymore, what that's done to change me personally is made me realize I don't need to be that way. And in fact, it doesn't make me happy when I just refuse to spend money on really basic things that I probably should be spending on myself. 
what that does after that, once you kind of go through the process of allowing yourself permission to not be cheap anymore, is you start to realize what you really value in terms of material items. I want to preface that because I've always been so focused on friends and family and making an impact in the world that I've never stopped to say, well, what if I spent a little money on myself? And what I realized is there are actually some things that I do really enjoy when it comes to spending a little bit of money. And there are some things that I will just never really care that much about. I don't probably will never get really crazy with cars. I am now drive a nine, 10 year old Volvo over a hundred thousand miles on it. It's got leather seats that in Bluetooth. I'm happy. There's nothing else that I want. Maybe a backup camera. I, I don't need to drive a fancy car. In fact, it would probably stress me out more than make me happy because I'd be paranoid that someone would scratch it. I doubt I will ever have a fancy car. I'm also recording this. Feel free to call me out in several years to come. But right now, I don't think I will have any more material happiness spending money on a car. I have realized, however, that being a really outgoing social person, I absolutely love going out to dinner and spending money at football games, the works, wherever I'm in a social setting. Not very good at poker. It's a $20 buy-in for poker, and I'm pretty confident I'm going to lose. Hey, chalk that up to that's a $20 night out with the boys. That brings me happiness. I don't need to be cheap around that anymore. I don't need to be doing things just to do them. But if I'm confident it's going to make me happy, I will pony up that money. And the reason why that changes your business structure is because at a certain point in time, Growing big just to grow big is a really bad idea. Seriously, go get your MBA. You know what will happen when you're getting your master's in business? You will be littered with case studies of business after business after business that needed, needed, had to, wanted to grow big and big and big and big. And then they get too big and then bad things start to happen. There's a whole chapter in Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power that goes into depth about why it's bad to bite off more than you can chew. Well, if you've realized about yourself that there's really not much more you want to spend your money on that could really bring you much more material happiness, then why keep growing? That's a really tough thing to actually think about because I think we are all competitive to a certain degree and we all want to grow big and big and big and big and big and big and be bigger and better than the next guy. But the truth of the matter is, that's potentially not only wrong, but devastating if you buy incorrectly or you tie yourself to more work than you want to do, or you don't get to see your kid growing up because you're slammed, inundated with work. So thank you again, Chris, for asking that wonderful question. And I hope this mid-month wisdom allows you to design your mobile home park business or whatever business you end up in around building optionality within to your strategy. Why? Again, number one, your wants will change in time, as will those around you. Number two, your capabilities will change. One day you'll wake up and you'll go, oh my gosh, I didn't realize I was really, really good at this or how good at this or how much bigger I could get comfortably or the opposite. You go, oh wow, I am not very good at this. I actually want to sell off some stuff that doesn't really jive with the stuff that I'm doing really well. Well, and number three, at a certain point in time, like my grandfather said before he passed, there's only so many steaks you can eat in a day. What my grandfather meant by that was, look, eventually it's just another zero in the bank account. There's, you realistically are going to hit a diminishing marginal utility of your own dollar. And when that hits, like Jim Rohn says, said, when you make a million dollars, all that does is that makes you more of whomever or whoever you are. It's not going to make you this wonderful person. It's just going to amplify whatever you are. If you're a jerk, it's going to make you a jerk with money, meaning you can now whack someone with a stick. You know what it's done to me? It's made me realize how happy helping others makes me. It's made me 
want to do even more for free, my time, my money, whatever. I want to help others. It makes me happy. And when I'm on my deathbed, other than wanting to be around friends and family, I'm going to want to reflect on how much of a difference that I hope I make in this world while I was here. I will not be asking for a bank statement or balance sheet to geek out over how much money I made or didn't make. I won't probably even think about that because I have made enough money to know that what's going to bring me happiness is helping others. And I hope that in your journey down the mobile home park rabbit hole or wherever you wind up going, that you do find success because along that journey, you will discover hopefully who you really are. And if you are hopefully a really good person at heart, good news, making whatever enough money or too much money is as you define it will just alleviate some of your stress and also amplify all the goodness within you. So I hope that inspires you. I hope that allows you to revisit how you're building your mobile home park business. Again, around wants, capabilities, and enough money. We'll call those the big three changes you're going to experience in your life. If you can build that optionality in to pivot when something crazy happens and any of those three predicted or not predicted, you will be well positioned to continue to succeed or hopefully if you have to exit, exit right. Thank you everyone for tuning in.